Hey, pirates. How you going? One of those unfortunate penny videos, which I'm going to make quite a lot of because there's so many pennies to go through. So today, we're looking at the 1950 penny. Wow, it looks like a very nice coin. Very special, but very common as well. And as you can see here, we have two mints. I've stacked them all up against each other. So here we have the dot after penny. So you know what the dot after penny means? Well, if you don't know, it means it's a Perth mint. If you've got one without a dot, it means it's a Melbourne mint. Unless it is an error coin, which they forgot to put the dot afterwards, in which case it would just look like a Melbourne penny. So if you want to get them both together, the first thing I look at is the date, and the date on both coins looks pretty similar. Uh, but the one on the Melbourne looks like it's a bit longer than the one on the Perth Mint. So then we have a look at the other coins. Yeah, the ones look a bit long. Uh, hmm. So here... It looks like we have two varieties. So on the Melbourne one, you can see the stroke going on. It's probably at least 45 degrees angles. And this one is probably uh, probably a little bit higher, probably about 50. But this one looks like it is smaller and thicker. And this one looks like it is longer. So that is... I would say two varieties of the 1950 penny from Melbourne. The fives look the same, the zeros look the same, and the nines, yeah, they look the same as well. If you look at the fonts, so the fonts are the lettering, uh, to me I don't see any difference. So that is what I believe is a difference. Need more research to see if that is the case. Yeah, if we put them both together, this Perf and this Mel one looks very similar. Except the Perf one is a bit smaller. Let's have a look at the rest. So the Perf coins. Okay. So we're looking at the, the dates. I like to look at dates. Uh, because they can tell a lot. They're usually one of the areas that varies a lot on these coins. Oh, that's a Melbourne one. How did that get there? Okay, Melbourne, Perth. There's two. Yeah, all the Perth ones. They all look pretty much the same. And so I don't see any variety in those. So. Let's have a look at that Apple Melbourne one that I had before. And yeah, definitely, that's definitely a variety that I can see there. Does it have anything in? Okay, it does have, it has a short figure one. Short figure one, rented date, scarce, a uh, long figure one, common. Long figure, re-entered date variations. So when they say re-entered date, that means it's been re-engraved. So there are two variations. So this is the long and this is the short. Uh, but there's also re-engraving. It looks like it's been doubled. So how you need to do is just move it around. You can see doubling if it's on there. But I don't see any doubling on these coins. And so that is uh, two of the varieties. That you can see just remember the difference a variety is deliberately done by the mint to make it look uh, a little bit different they're done for various reasons in, in uh, these cases are usually uh, a re-engraving or just using a different punch or, or for a date okay so for the Melbourne one uh, what you need to find is a die clash there is a die crash that you can find on them. I don't see any on this one. And you can 
obverse legend doubled. So the obverse is this. So the legend is doubling. And I don't see any doubling on that one. Or on this coin. And you can find die cracks. You can pretty much find die cracks in any date of penny. Because you know it's just a large, large coin. Uh, it's when you put pressure on it, it's quite easy to crack the die. Especially when you're striking it hard. Another one is a uh, dot on faint X of Rex. Okay, so here it looks like this is a little bit of uh, weakness. Could be a die feel. Could be just being worn. Because right, when you put two coins together, they, they can rub. More than likely, they're going to rub closer to the edge. So that's what um, can happen there. So the X is some coins is faint from these ones. No, not faint. Looks like a lamination floor there, but because it's so worn, uh, it could also be damaged. So, and L and 9 of date, die crack through, yeah, doubled. So you've got doubling on the dates. Okay, so that's what you need to look for. Then we have the Perf Mint. So, and on the Perf Mint, uh, what we're looking for is missing KG and HP. So you're missing there. And this one has ghosting. You can see the effigy of the king. And also missing HP. So these ones don't have any of those. So this is a little bit weak. So 1949 had a good KG. Uh, but these ones, they're a little bit weakness. So they did have a problem at Perth Mint. They still haven't worked it out. Um, okay, Ruse has spiked gloves. Uh, okay, spiked gloves. On the first two claws. So the spike gloves will be there. And I don't have any. And then we have extra long sheriff attached to top of five. So extra long sheriff in the five. Uh, unknown. And you get die cracks. So definitely look for die cracks. This is ghosting. Ghosting is not that rare on coins. And I would say probably uh, probably makes the coin just a few dollars. Okay, so the mintages for these are quite high. So the Perth Mint had a mintage of 21,488,000. And the Melbourne Mint had 36,358,000. So in total, that's about... 57 million, about 800,000, roughly. It's a little bit more than that, uh, but I'm illiterate, I can't count. So, let's see how much you would be paying for one of these coins. Okay, so once again, we go to sold listings, and you can see here uh, a huge floor. This is an error coin, sold for $3.25. So, error coins. While they will get you a higher value, they're not really, they don't cost that much. Uh, okay, so you've got a lot of coins for a dollar. So if you're just starting collecting these are the ones you should be getting, and then you've got four coins for $16. We've seen that before. I haven't looked it up and I uh, wonder why. Okay, $10. Uh, that is in the key ring. So if you make jewellery out of them, you're going to get more value. Okay, circulated. Uh, not too sure why it went for that price. Here's one for uncirculated for $12. So that's basically the maximum price you should be paying for one of these coins because it's uncirculated. And then you've got a lot of coins. Definitely they're the ones you should get. $3 for a one in circulated. So pretty much coins that are you know in this condition you'll probably be paying one or two dollars from i recommend you don't pay more uh, it 
if you got one in this condition, so this one is in a uh, pretty good condition. As you can see, it has ghosting as well. It just has some toning because it hasn't been stored properly. Uh, but this one's pretty much almost uncirculated. This should cost about, I don't know, 10 to $15. So that's what you should be paying for these coins. So if uh, we look at more, uh, penny to 40, yeah. You're not really going to get a high V for these coins because, you know, what is it? 56 million, 57 million. Uh, it's just a very common coin. Even in, um, you should be able to get them in uncirculated pretty re easily. $12 above fine. It might be EF condition. Uh, then you got these. Definitely what you should look out for. And then another one, this one looks a bit uncirculated, so $15. So anyway, then you got an error. That is a nice error. So 325, obviously the best offer was accepted. Uh, so this is also what you should be looking out for is error coins. And another $3. Yeah, so very common coin. This one's graded $6410. Yeah, yeah, probably a bit too much actually for a graded coin. Just remember when you buy graded coins, buy the coin, not the slab. Another one almost on circulate, $50. Uh, this one is missing, $20. So it's an error coin. This one's in good condition, $30. Huh. Okay, maybe 15 to $30 for one in uncirculated. Uh, this one does have toning, but I like it anyway. So this one's going into my collection. And the rest, actually I'll need to keep one of the Melbourne ones, but the rest is going to be flogged off. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope this helps you with uh, your pennies and it helps you with values. And hmm, maybe I should make a video on conditions and how to look for the condition of the coin. Thank you and goodbye.